What's up guys? Welcome to the video. Welcome back to my channel if you've been here before. Thank you so much for clicking on this video if you are new here. My name's Chantelle. I am a first year veterinary medicine student at the WCVM in Canada. And today I am making a video about how I study anatomy. Because currently I am studying anatomy. <laughs> we have an upcoming midterm next Monday. Today is Sunday, so not tomorrow, thank goodness. A week from now, we have our third anatomy midterm, and we will still have two more midterms to go, plus a final at the end of the year. What can I say about anatomy? The first word that comes to mind is overwhelming, and the second word that comes to mind is important. So, kind of unfortunate, and that's how I feel about that class. It is, it is unfortunate, but... We are trying our best and it's been going well so far. So I hope the tips I have in this video can be helpful to someone. I'm gonna start by doing a little overview, things that I think everybody should know just about studying successfully for literally anything. And then we will dive into what I have been doing for anatomy and what has been working for me so far. A couple key overall tips about just studying in general. And this is stuff that I wish I was better about in my early years of university and it did take me a little while to really figure it out but now that i've got it figured out i swear by it and it's kind of how i structure my study schedule to be the most successful so first things first find your study space and time study space is so important you can study in different places some people study really well in a coffee shop and if that's you i am super jealous because i could never I would just be a complete squirrel looking at absolutely everything. I actually moved my desk that I'm currently sitting at right now into the basement because when it was upstairs in the office, it was too distracting. And I ended up moving down here. And now my desk is just really like nicely set up the way I like it, facing a plain white wall, good lighting, it's comfortable. I get way more done here. So it was well worth the move. Second thing I'll say about time, and maybe not everybody is like this, but I didn't even realize I was like this until I kind of started to tune into it a little bit more. There are certain times of the day that you study better than others, and it can be really beneficial to figure out what those are. For me, I can study really well from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m., and then again from probably like 5 p.m. until midnight. But that time in between, like noon and 5 p.m., nothing goes into my brain. Nothing. Like if I'm at home on the weekend studying, I schedule my study time to be in the morning and in the evening. And then I get everything else I need to get done for the day, work out, get groceries, walk the dog, whatever, in the times that I know I'm not productive for studying anyway, if that makes sense. So second thing is figure out what kind of learner you are. And this really probably shouldn't be that much of a surprise, but if you spend all of your time watching videos and watching your instructor and just hearing things, hearing things, and you're not really even an auditory learner, maybe you're a visual learner or like a kinesthetic learner, it's not going to be that beneficial. And I would hate for you to just waste your time trying to get all of this information in your brain when that's literally not the way your brain works. There are a number of free quizzes that you can take online that tell you what kind of learner you are. As far as I can tell, they are reasonably accurate. And at the very least, they should give you some idea of maybe what might work better for you. If you're not sure, or if you've never taken a quiz or just really are in the midst of trying to figure out what might work for you and you really have no idea, that might be a really good place to start. And my third tip is don't be afraid to utilize outside resources. And especially for anatomy, it probably doesn't really matter what textbook has what information in it, because for a class like anatomy, it's really all the same. The heart is the heart. This nerve is this nerve. The spine is the spine. You know, there's not a lot of wiggle room on that. There's not a lot of argument that can be made there between different authors, but the information might be presented in a way in one textbook that really is not doing it for you, but somebody else might have it a different way that really makes a lot more sense. And I have found that the textbook that was recommended for our class, I don't really like. It's super dense, really thick, just like, 
I'm a good reader and I just feel like I can't understand what's going on in that textbook. But I found a different textbook and it just seems way more clear, a lot more precise. Things make a lot more sense to me, even though it's not the one that was recommended by our class. And I just give that third point because I know it can be hard to branch out from what they say to study in your lectures. And it is completely up to you. Full disclaimer, these are just what works for me. But if that is something that you would be comfortable with and you feel like you just need a little bit more outside help or a different perspective or just a different worded something, that might be worth looking into. Okay, what can I say about anatomy? I found it, honestly still find it, overwhelming. The amount of information is overwhelming. And everybody will tell you that, and they are right, but it doesn't mean that you can't be successful and it doesn't mean that you can't learn it and it doesn't mean that you won't do well, because you will. You absolutely can, you will, I believe in you. The thing I try to remember about anatomy, and if I'm totally honest, like it's not my favorite class, I wish it was. I wish I loved it. I wanted to love it. It seems like it should be like the most amazing and interesting and like fun class ever. And it kind of is sometimes in labs and stuff like that. But then other times it is just like, how am I ever going to know all of this? And it can be very exhausting to study. So just try to keep a fresh perspective, a happy perspective, trying to remember that you are in vet school and you are learning anatomy and it is a super fundamental class for everything else you are ever gonna need to know. And if you can get some kind of good understanding in first year anatomy, I really, really think that it will be beneficial in second year, third year, fourth year, and then out in practice, because nobody can say that anatomy is not important for a doctor or a veterinarian to know. So that is my two cents about that. And that is how I remind myself when I don't wanna study anatomy, that I need to know it and I need to study it. So our anatomy class is broken up into two parts. We have a lecture portion, a lecture portion in class delivered by different professors teaching different lectures um, because it is so broad and different profs have different areas of expertise. So they kind of teach what they know, which is great. And then we also have a laboratory portion where we do our dissections and fresh specimens, fascinated models, looking at x-rays, all of that kind of stuff. And so because our class is delivered in two different portions, when we write our exams, we also write our exams in two different portions. So part of our exam is written and part of our exam is in the anatomy lab bell ringer portion where they just have different stations set up and basically you're on a timer and you go to a station and there's something in it and, it's, and you get a minute to answer and then the timer goes and then you move on to the next one kind of stressful but you do get better at it and then after a while it is almost kind of fun okay so when i think about anatomy and having learned what works for me this is me recognizing that i am a super visual learner but mostly actually just like a reading type of learner i learn by reading things i don't learn by people talking to me i don't always learn by just like a youtube explanation unless I can really see what they're doing and like how that makes sense. So for me, reviewing my notes, testing myself on the notes, reviewing my notes again. And that's that's really like what it comes down to for me because I'm so visual. And so that's what it comes back to knowing what kind of learner you are is super important. What I like to do is we go to class. I don't get the most out of it, but I really try to focus on the notes and the words, reading as the prof is talking. And then when I come home, I will read. And as I read, I'm testing myself. So I'll read about this cranial nerve and then I will cover it or look away and I'll say, okay, what is this nerve responsible for? Where is this nerve found? What does it innervate? And if I get it wrong, that's okay. Cause it's my first time. But then the more I do that, if I keep continually getting something wrong, things that I have looked at multiple times, then I will make a flashcard on it because obviously I just need to hammer that into my brain. And the more I do that, I get a few flashcards accumulated, but not like 5,000. That to me isn't helpful and I would never have time to go through that many flashcards, which is something I did learn by trial and error this year. So I hope that helps somebody because I made a million flashcards and then I didn't look at them. Not helpful. The other thing to know about anatomy is that it is a lot of memorization. I try to memorize lists 
and acronyms. And even though it is a lot of memorization, I still try to be able to describe what I'm seeing or learning about or explain what it is that we're learning about. So for an example, if we're learning about the heart, I could just memorize the four chambers and all the blood vessels and the nerves. Fine, fair. But how does that really help me then when things start to go wrong or change or things aren't the way that maybe it's exactly as I memorized it? So for me, if I can explain how the blood flows to the heart, how it is innervated, what nerves are you know acting on the heart, what branches come off of the aorta, what branches come off the pulmonary trunk, all of these things, then it's like telling the story to myself really stays in my brain a lot better. And so that's where I would rather spend my time is talking it out, reading, making notes, all of that, compared to making flashcards that I'm just going to memorize and then write the exam and then forget, probably is what I would do anyway. So that's kind of what I like to use for the lecture portion and for just the theory material, kind of what we get in class. And then switching over into what I like to do for the dissection, because the time you get on your dissection is precious, but it's, it's almost always never enough time to really, really grasp, grasp it and like get your head around it. So something I have found helpful is either before or after your dissection lab, um, watch a YouTube video about what they're doing. Like for instance, if we were doing the dog muscles of the shoulder, I would try to find a YouTube video on a dissection about that, either before, so that when I come into the lab, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, I recognize that, I remember he did this, I've seen this before, and it makes it stick. Or you can do it after, and then kind of use it as a test, and be like, oh yeah, we saw that in our specimen. Oh, we didn't see that, or oh, that's not where I thought it was, or oh, maybe we had that wrong in our lab, or you know, things like that, just to kind of keep it fresh in your head. And then it's kind of like you've had the opportunity to go through the dissection more than once. The other thing we get for lab is our lab handouts. And our lab handouts, bless our lab TA soul, he's amazing. He makes such good lab handouts with really, really good pictures. And I will take those pictures, put them into my iPad and annotate on them what is the name of the muscles or the nerves or point or whatever. And just going through that kind of active process is very helpful for me as well. That is kind of my breakdown for what I do for lectures, my breakdown for kind of how I study for labs. And then in general, you know, once the time comes that you know you have a midterm coming up, you have to give yourself enough time. Anatomy is just not something that you can cram for. And we hear that all the time in vet school, like, oh, you can't cram for vet school, it's too much. And at the beginning of the year, I was like, hmm, I don't know, like, I can cram with the best of them. I have been doing this for, this is my eighth year of university, I can cram, but uh, yeah, no, they were right. They were definitely right. Because if I tried to cram for our anatomy midterm, there would be no way I even got through all of the material once, let alone try to actually keep it in my brain and go through it and test myself and then come back to it in a couple days and test myself again and like, kind of like grow that knowledge base would not happen. Anatomy is a class that takes time and it takes frequent visiting the material and coming back to it and reviewing it. So that's kind of what I have for anatomy. And I know that is super crash course and I am really, I'm not an expert. I'm just saying these are the tips that worked for me. I still hope that you could take something helpful away from this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please feel free to subscribe or like or leave a comment and I will see you in the next one. Bye.